Welcome to another episode of International Legal Scholars and Practitioners, the podcast where we unravel the complexities of the legal world to bring you valuable information. I'm your host, Dr. Mushinur Bahramova, and today we have a special guest who will guide us through the intricate cases of immigration law in South Korea. Joining us is the esteemed guest, uh, Mr. Nam Kum Ji Hyun, a seasoned expert in the field with years of experience navigating the ever evolving landscape of immigration. Today, Mr. Nam Kum will share his wealth of knowledge and insights, shedding light on the nuances of immigration law, recent updates, and essential tips for those navigating the process. Mr. Nam Kum Ji Hyun, thank you for joining us today, and we are glad to see you in our podcast. The listeners get ready for an informative journey into the world of immigration law in South Korea with Mr. Nam Kung. Stay tuned for expert insights, practical advice, and deep dive into the legal landscape of immigration law of South Korea. With your permission, Mr. Nam Kung, let me ask my questions for discussion. How does international immigration law reconcile the balance between facilitating global mobility and safeguarding national security interests? Regarding to the immigration, there is no general international law. No. Principle of non-intervention in the domestic matters is uh, there is no general international law. But, but, there exist many tra transnational problems to solve together 
or to cooperate with other countries. I think it's very meaningful to look at international law interacting with immigration issues. The first one, as a commercial airplane and air travelers increase to ensure the safety and efficient operation of airplane and airport worldwide, in 1944, Convention on International Civil Aviation, so-called the Chicago Convention, was established and ICAO was organized. They produced standards and recommendations for facilitation of international flight. And the second, there are law established at the regional level to promote border crossing. The European Union is the most well-known example. In 1985, seven European countries signed the Schengen Agreement to eliminate physical borders among countries to ensure free movement without in immigration check. After creation of European Union, the Schengen Agreement expanded to almost all member states. The third one is the International Humanitarian Instrument, International Human Rights Instrument. In the immigration area, the Refugee Convention and the Convention Against Tortures are important huma humanitarian law. No international law does not directly guarantee foreigners the right to enter or stay in foreign countries, but the principle of non flama in humanitarian law restrains the sovereignty of a country from deporting refugees to a certain area. European Convention on Human Rights prohibit member states from repatriation to countries where to not to secure a certain level of human rights standard. There is also an ILO convention to set standard for cross-border laborers. So another important source of international instruments are UN Security Council recommendation against terrorism crime. There is no general international law on migration but countries are interacting one another by various international law. Thank you for your answer. And South Korea has experienced a notable increase in immigration in recent years. And what unique challenges and opportunities does this present for the country's immigration policies? As I remember, in early 20s, 2000, 2000s, there were less than 500,000 foreigners long-term stay in Korea. Mainly, there are some foreign workers from West Asia and ethnic Koreans from China. These days, more than 2 million non-Korean citizens are living in Korea. The largest population are from China, the second came from Vietnam, and the third is Thailand, and United States and Uzbekistan and Japan. Almost 80,000 Uzbek peoples are living in Korea. Ethnic Koreans from China and former Soviet Union cover the biggest portion in foreigners in Korea. Since 2010, foreigners' nationality have become more, more diverse and their number has rapidly increased. Korea has been suffering from a low birth rate for more than 20 years. The total fertility rate is so low. Even though we put a lot of money to increase this rate, it does not, it did not work yet. These days, many peoples are considering the immigration policy to cope with labor shortages, lack of population. When thinking about immigration policy, I worry about Korean nationalism. In Uzbekistan, more than 100 ethnic groups live have lived together for a long time, and they learn how to harmonize with one another. But in Korea, only Korean people have lived more than 2,000 years. Even I'm an immigration officer, but I'm not used to living with people from other cultures. Fear of, a foreign, fear of strangers may lead to discrimination and exclusion. This is the big challenge for our immigration policy. On the contrary, most of Korean peoples are kind to others and they easily adopt a new environment. 
the Koreans' education level is so high. I guess they are open to new environment. I think it's opportunity for us, I guess. It's very interesting. And could you shed light on South Korea's approach to asylum seekers and refugees, including the legal frameworks in place and any recent developments? Like many other countries, Korea is a member state of refugee conventions and provision for the refugee were added to the Immigration Act in 1994 for the first time. Although provision for refugee protection was stipulated in the law, any asylum seeker did not arrive in Korea for a long time. After 2000, first refugee was recognized and the number, uh, the number of asylum seekers increased. Before 2000, before 2010, thousands of asylum seekers applied for refugee status or years, but after 2010, more than 10,000 people apply for the refugee status or years. I expect the number of applicants will be over 20,000 next year. Mm -hmm. The Korean government enacted a separate refugee law for the first time in Asia. The refugee law not only reflects contents of refugee convention, and but contains procedure formed from the international customary law and precedent. Dr. Irem Sengul, the Turkey University, explained about it already in your YouTube channel. The Refugee Convention emphasizes due, on due process for refugee recognition. Therefore, to, to comply with the due process, it takes much time and money. Many countries are suffering from back law. Some asylum seekers are taking advantage of the time to work at this time con this time consuming process. Pers personally, I think it would be good if a lot of good people came, work hard, make money, and return their countries. Many countries are facing economic difficulties since COVID-19. I hope some of them find hope in Korea. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Namkun. In the context of international immigration law, how do countries, including South Korea, address the humanitarian aspects of migration, particularly concerning vulnerable populations? As you know, there are various international human rights law to protect vulnerable people, such as the International Covenant on Civil and po Political Rights, International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, United Nations Convention Against Transnational Oga Organized Crime, and Convention on Right of Child. There are a lot of international human rights law. Korean government has the obligation to comply with the purpose of international agreement in domestic law. For example, when victims of human trafficking are found, government has, has the obligation to protect, provide them emergency medical support, investigate and indict the criminal. In Korean, the Ministry of Gender Equality and Family is in charge of this job, and Ministry of Justice issue ID card to victims and provide what they need. So women from so Southeast Asia and the former Soviet Union comes to Korea under the rule that if you go to Korea, you can make a lot of money. Then they are subject to sexual exploitative labels. It happens so many times. Domestic violence and sexual violence and to take care of children, even the children of illegal immigrants are provided educational opportunity and support for children in various procedures. To ensure international law to be adapted in proper, National Human Rights Commission has a, have a right to monitor and evaluate the other government department 
whether they follow international human rights law or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. South Korea has been actively attracting skilled professionals, especially in the technology sector. And what strategies does the country employ to manage and encourage skilled migration? Korea, but many countries are eager to attract global talent, but it's not easy. It's not easy. People tend to move to developed countries Developed countries easily gain brain at a low cost, but developing countries often lose their talent. Korea is in a difficult position to obtain global talent. One of the reasons because Korea uses its own language, not, not English, a global language. English is not the official language in Korea, so we are not easy to get global talent, but Korean government also tried to attract foreign talent. First of all, we focus on the foreign students. 20 years ago, we set a goal to recruit 50,000 foreign students to study in Korea. In 2023, 150,000 foreign students are studying in Korea. And we are going to double this number in 2027. And we are considering various incentives to encourage them to get a job and settle down in Korea. In order to, in order to attract excellent talent, various systems such as permanent resident card and immigration, immigration point system has been introduced. But in my opinion, no significant so significant results have been achieved yet. And the skilled worker point system, so-called K-point, was introduced this year for the first time. Foreign workers who are working in Korea, Korea and have a chance to apply for the long-term visa when they can prove their proper ability, such as Korean language proficiency, proficiency and job experience. If they become a skilled workers, they can live in Korea for a long time and invite their family. Now it's getting popularities. In 2023, we set a quota at 2,000 skilled workers a year, and we will double the quota to 4,000 people in 2024. The Korean government is conducting various study to attract excellent foreign talent to find attractive attractive model. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Family reunification is a key aspect of immigration. And how does uh, South Korea navigate the complexities of family-based immigration and what are the associated legal considerations? Family unific unification is an important international principle. But there is still no international law that explicitly defines families because there are various types of family structure in the world. The the principle of a family unit is mainly discussed in the refugee law. When they are recognized as a refugee, they have a right to unite with their family. Generally, family refer to one spouse and minor direct descendant. It may also include adult descendant or elderly direct descendant ascendant when they have difficulty living independently due to disabilities. Korea refugee law also established, established the principle of family unity, but on the other hand, the Immigration Act does not define, define family union. Just a few types of visa, such as spouse of citizens and accompanying family member, are based on family unification. Although there have been progress compared to the past, in my opinion, there are still lack of legislation on family unity in Korean immigration law. 
Okay. Considering the dynamic nature of global events and how do international and South Korean immigration laws respond to sudden shifts in immigration patterns such as those triggered by geopolitical changes or crises? Many events happen in the world. There is turmoil arise every day, such as war between countries, civil war, ethnic conflict and religious conflict, sometimes incredible nature, nature disaster can also occur. This event inevitably led to the movement of peoples. To handle with this incident, Korean government take various measures such as international human rights law, government discretions, and strengths our border management. For example, in 2010, an anti-government protest movement in the Middle East called Arab Spring occurred. Due to the political and social turmoil, many Arab people from Syria, Yemen, and Egypt came to Korea to apply for refugee status. As a member of international communities, Korean government made many efforts to provide them shelter and protection. We also provide shelter and protection to Ukraine and Myanmar and some countries. Sometimes the government exercises discretions by executive orders where the event cannot be covered by international human rights law. For example, for example, when the earthquake occurred in Turkey in 2023, Various measure was taken for Turkish citizens, such as exemption of a lot of penalty, and we gave them opportunity to visit their home countries. But in the situation COVID-19 broke out in 2019, has become a major challenge all over the world. For three years, various measures have been taken to deal with COVID-19, for example, we operate a full border management system to control passenger flow to follow quarantine rules and the law to and the law to report foreign residents to immigration office was enacted in emergency situation. As the movement of people crossing border increase, these problems are growing more and more. It's a new challenge in immigration section. Thank you for your answer. And South Korea has engaged in bilateral agreements with certain countries regarding immigration. Could you discuss the impact of such agreements on immigration policies and the movement of people? agreement at immigration is the visa waiver agreement. The visa waiver agreement is intended to, intend to promote tourism and visit between two countries. In Central Asia, Korea, Korea has a signed visa waiver agreement with Turkey and Kazakhstan. Korean citizens can travel 189 countries without visa. It ranks third, third in the world World Passport Power Rankings. The N, the Memorandum Understanding on Bilateral Cooperation in Sending and introduce, Introducing Employment Permit System Manpower play an important role in relation to the introduction of foreign workers. This Memorandum of Understanding has been signed with 16 countries including Vietnam, Philippines, Uzbekistan, and Mongol. Next year, 160,000 foreign workers will enter Korea to work by this uh, bilateral agreement. There are different types of bilateral interagency agreements to simplify border crossing. Korea has signed agreement with countries have automatic immigration gates, such as the United States, Hong Kong, Taiwan. So Korean can pass other countries' auto automatic immigration gate by this bilateral interagency agreement. 
there is an ABTC agreement, agreement that exempt a person from visa in regional communities. For example, ABTC member country issue ABTC card to business people working in the large companies, allowing them to business without visa in the other member state. As such, Korea has entered into various bilateral agreements to promote immigration policy and the cross-border movement of people. Okay. Ensuring the successful integration of immigration is crucial. What steps does South Korea take to promote cultural sensitivity and inclusivity in, in its immigration policies? Number of foreigners in Korea went up. Korea came to get Korea um, get to pay much attention to the, their livings. From 2007, Korea have enacted various laws related to the foreigners, such as the Basic Act on the Foreign Resident in Korea and Basic Act on Multicultural. They focus to provide a comprehensive service for the non-Korean to adapt, adapt to Korean culture soon. In accordance with this law, Korean government allocate and spend a lot of money to facilitate foreigners to adapt in Korea the most focused point is the Korean language education. Although the government, Korean government make a great effort to understand cultural diversity from early in school, in my opinion, compared to the past, the view toward the foreigners seem to have changed more negatively. Law and policy can be changed and developed, but people's mind are not easily changed because it's a culture. In the, in the early 2000s, the view toward the foreigners were foreigners come to Korea and work hard. Thank you. They are pitiful peoples we must help. But from 2010, antipathy toward the Chinese people grew up. In 2020, antipathy and Hostility to Muslim foreigners is quite large. When Yemen refugees came to Jeju Island as a group in 2018, even protests broke out, demanding them the refugee leave. Some Korean protest against the construction of a mosque in their town. So I, I told you already, it may be the big challenge in Korean immigration policy and in future of Korea. And my last question to you, Mr. Namkung. Given the evolving nature of migration trends globally, how do you foresee the future of international immigration law and what adaptions might South Korea make in response to these changes? Korea um, get to pay much attention to the, their livings. From 2007, Korea have enacted various laws related to the foreigners, such as the Basic Act on the Foreign Resident in Korea and Basic Act on Multicultural. They focus to provide a comprehensive service for the non-Korean to adapt, adapt to Korean culture soon. In accordance with this law, Korean government allocate and spend a lot of money to facilitate foreigners to adapt in Korea. The, the most post Cost point is the Korean language education. Although the government, Korean government make a great effort to understand the cultural diversity from early in school, in my opinion, compared to the past, the view toward the foreigners seem to have changed more negatively. Law and policy can be changed and developed, but people's mind are not easily changed because it's a culture. In the, in the early 2000s, the view toward the foreigners were foreigners come to Korea and work hard. Thank you. They are pitiful peoples. 
we must have. But from 2010, antipathy toward the Chinese people grew. In 2020, antipathy and hostility to Muslim foreigners is quite large. When Yemen refugee came to Jeju Island as a group in 2018, even protest broke out, demanding them the refugee leave. Some Korean protest against the construction of a mosque in their town. So I, I told you already, it may be the big challenge in Korean immigration policy and in future of Korea. Thank you very much. And that wraps up another insightful episode of International Legal Scholars and Practitioners. A special thank you to our estimate guest, Mr. Nam Kung, for sharing his expertise on immigration law in South Korea. We hope you found this discussion as enlightening as we did. Navigating the legal intricacies of immigration is undoubtedly a complex journey, but with the right knowledge and guidance, it becomes a manageable path. Remember, our aim is to empower you with the information you need to make informed decisions. If you have any questions or topics you would like to explore in the future episodes, feel free to reach out. Your feedback is unavailable. Stay tuned for more episodes where we continue to demystify the legal world, making it more accessible to everyone. Until next time, I am Dr. Mohsin al -Bahramova. And this has been International Legal Scholars and Practitioners. Wishing you a legal journey, fellow with understanding and empowerment. Take care. Bye.